This video is much more for what you need. That way you know exactly what you need. That makes, you know what I mean. <laughs> Welcome back to the video. This is gonna be an intro to lighting and light controllers. Uh, this is in case you wanna use it for worship, you know, for your stage design uh, for church, or if you wanna do a YouTube video, you know what you can use with it. Uh, in case you wanna to switch to different lightings, talk about that in the video. So don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment, and I hope you enjoy the video. All right, so in this video, we're gonna be talking about stage lighting. There's so many ways you can use them and there's a lot of benefits including the fact that it really just adds ambiance it adds color it adds a dynamic level uh, to your youtubing your stage uh, your djing whatever you're using it for this really kind of adds oomph to to that a couple things that you're going to need this video is going to be just kind of a quick intro we're planning on doing more videos assisting you and getting it set up knowing kind of how to get them to do exactly what you want them to do. So we're gonna be adding all of those in future videos. So one of the main things you're going to need, first of all, are the lights. If you don't have the lights, you don't got the lights. <laughs> so, so what you need are the lights. And there, there's many options. You got, you got moving heads, uh, which are basically the, the ones that move, thus the name moving heads. Uh, then you also have PARS. This is an older, an older model. There, there are newer models. Um, where they're a lot more slimmer. Obviously that's kind of what's out there, but if you want something cheap, uh, more than likely you can find something on Craigslist, on OfferUp, maybe even on Amazon, eBay. There are many options out there and you can find these dirt cheap. Um, they do have some limitations. They are only RGB, which stands for red, green, blue. Um, while others also have white and amber. So there, there are various options that you can have um, obviously those would be a bit more expensive because there's a lot more going on. Uh, but for the sake of, if you want just something simple that you can set up, RGBs are definitely a cheaper option for you to go. Now, another option, for example, here is a light strip. Now, again, this too is an RGB, so it is definitely an older model. It's again, cheaper. Uh, if you want to go this option, similar concept, these just have red, green, and blue LEDs. Um, and, and the way that this works here is with the light controller, you basically can adjust how much red, how much green, and how much blue you want. That way you have a, a uh, variety of colors that you can essentially create yourself with the light controller. Which brings me to the other item that you do need is the light controller. This guy right here, woo, you can see that right there. And so with this here, it allows you to connect the fixtures to each other, and then you connect one line to the controller and this controller would essentially allow you to again tell the lights what to do what color you want them to be etc it's really the next step aside from having lights that you need in order to be able to control the lights and have them be and do exactly what what you would like them to do um, aside from that you will need some wiring so most of these lights uh, i'll show you here with this one so most of these lights have what's called a DMX input. Um, it, it looks a lot like it looks a lot like a, a mic cable. And to be quite honest with you, you could actually just use mic cables. Uh, give it a shot. I, I've had issues in the past with some mic cables not working, um, but we have tried and tested with our light controller mic cables as well, and they work just as fine. So definitely test it out I, I would suggest trying out with just regular mic cables first since they are a lot cheaper than dmx cables um, but if that's not working maybe the problem is that your controller is a bit delicate and and requires dmx cables what's cool about these lights in this dmx system is that you can actually daisy chain these lights so each of these lights have two inputs there's an input and an output and the way that this works is you would plug the controller into the input and then on the output, you connect that to the next light and you just daisy chain them down the line. And even if they're different kinds of lights, they will still 
communicate with each other and communicate with the light controller most importantly. Um, so we have crossed these two types of fixtures and they work just fine. Now, the most important item in order for this to work are the addresses. And uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna go into addresses and how to set addresses and, and kind of how to configure that in our next video. Uh, but that's the most important key in, in, and in some case, the most complex thing to really get these lights to communicate and for the controller to select specific lights to have them do what you want them to do. For this video, we really just wanted to touch base on the gear that you're going to need. It's really not that complicated. I think just many people are intimidated by just trying to implement this. I know we all appreciate um, just the colors and, and the dynamic uh, kind of scenery that these lights can, can add, uh, but many times we are intimidated just by how much gear we feel like it needs or how complicated it is. And I feel like anyone, if they're willing to implement, can definitely learn and get this started in whatever setting they need it used. So thanks so much, and we'll see you on the next one. You can daisy chain most of these lights. Um, and even if it's a different type of light, I mean, we, we've daisy chained these older kind of lights with our, we've daisy chained most of these lights with our, like, actually, I'm gonna fix that because. Thank you.